What's going on, everybody? So it is great to be back for another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. And I just want to say a big thank you before we talk about anything else to everyone who's been watching the videos, commenting on the videos and sharing their feedback, sharing their advice, or just maybe sharing their opinions on their first experience this was with the game or returning to the game it's been a lot of fun and i hope to kind of continue that going forward it's kind of rare to have um a truly free-to-play experience with this game i i know that it's kind of weird for me I, I don't remember starting out like basically with nothing with the advent of like the hyperdrive bundle and the, and the light speed bundle it's kind of just everyone has a GL within the first day. <laughs> but if you're truly free to play, you know, it is a whole different ball game. And that's where we're at right now, trying to get our way to level 85. And I want to talk about a few things that's going to help you through the earlier stages. And I'm talking about starting stages, like first two, three, four weeks inside the game, what you're going to want to be doing and some things that I'm doing to really jumpstart my progression. First, let's talk about a few early game i should say starter beginner goals early game is like getting to level 85 and, and the later stages of the earlier levels but we're talking about the starter part of the game which is like the first two three four weeks when you're like not even level 60 not even level 70 you're still unlocking most of your game modes and one of the big ones for us on the horizon is going to be galactic war or the galactic battles galactic war in specific gives you just a bunch of extra shards that are going to really just passively fuel a lot of your random different teams that you might want to build out as well as give you a bunch of resources especially ability materials starting out so we need to be able to accomplish the entire thing every single time and that means that we need a team that has sustainability as well as the ability to actually kill off all the teams that you might be fighting what teams are we going to be bringing in with the campaign and for the galactic war well one thing to really keep in note uh keep in mind i should say is that if you're just looking to finish off a specific campaign battle you can actually just roll in here and choose some random support that you have on your friends list that's all you really need to do if you do that they can single-handedly carry every single battle that you'll ever experience in um <laughs> your campaign journey as long as they're a pretty leveled up character you know at least like gear 9 gear 10 uh, gear 11 they'll they'll be able to solo carry it if you do not have any friends um which unfortunately or any allies to borrow heroes from you'll just be using the standard random ones that they give you which do help out but it won't be like okay this doesn't matter at all you're gonna need to have your team set up and that's where some of this comes in of course you'll still need your teams for galactic war because you can't use any allies in there and so starting out the game let's talk about the dark side first because this is very simplistic i literally have two characters invested into let me just go to the actual dark side um where are you dark side here so of the dark side characters that i own i have two characters that are even like remotely invested into you. I leveled up Kylo Ren just so I could get some of the quests done and you could do the same, but I literally only put gear on Moff Gideon and Dark Trooper. Partially because they are going to end up being, well, pretty strong characters, but also they're going to be our part of our starting squad. Our first starting squad I'm looking for is Moff Gideon, Dark Trooper, General Veers, Colonel Stark, and then we're going to be heading into the Imperial Troopers. I got to find the last one. Uh, either Admiral Piet, uh, or you could go with like range trooper, but I'm going to be shooting for Admiral Piet so I can have a little bit of an advantage going into, you know, farming later ships. I think Admiral Piet's going to be a good long-term investment and the Imperial troopers are so strong nowadays that you don't need a fifth until much later, even though he's a later game farm, but Moff Gideon and Dark Trooper are given to you for free at the start of the game, which means you can immediately start investing as much as you possibly can bring them to as much level as you can, invest as much gear as you can into them, and they'll carry you through the most most of the dark side uh, campaign. As you could see in my campaign, I got stuck around chapter four, but that is not a big deal because your main goal with your dark side team is just to get to hard three F to unlock Captain Rex. And that's where we talk about our light side teams, okay? So our light side team is gonna be focused in on the phoenix squad now if you've ever played star wars galaxy of heroes in the past you probably would have heard about starting with the phoenix squad now recently over the past like i want to say like 
couple of years there has been a little bit of discussion around not starting with the phoenix squad but i would say with the addition of captain rex which i think it was a few months ago it's gone back to okay phoenix squad is the best starting lineup and the reason is captain rex his unique is just the most absurd unique you could possibly have for the phoenix squad it gives you a bunch of extra assists it gives you a bunch of stats on your characters and this is what truly fuels the phoenix squad okay giving you massive turn meter massive health and protection regeneration massive uh, assisting potential and of course again just base stats this is what makes the phoenix squad so powerful and realistically usable up until the end of the game um, as far as I've seen. Maybe I'm wrong about that one because I don't know enough about the end game to make a conclusive decision about that. But I do know that even in the later parts of the game that people are using the Phoenix Squad because of Captain Rex, he has really uh, streamlined the Phoenix Squad and has made them viable. And so when you're looking at your initial team, you really need Captain Rex and it takes some time to actually acquire him. He's a hard node, which means that it's going to take you, well, assuming you're getting because he's a one X or one shard per farm node, it's gonna at least take you, you know, uh, two shards per day, two to three shards per day. We're looking at 12 to 14 days or so on average, or I should say like 11 to 13 days on average to get access to Captain Rex. And that's after you unlock the node, which means we're looking at like two, maybe two and a half weeks, assuming you're not doing any refreshes, which we'll talk about in just a second to get access to Captain Rex, which means the Phoenix squad is kind of bad, like quite bad until you get Captain Rex actually on lockdown. And that means that you might not be able to actually beat Galactic War with this team until you have Captain Rex. And so we need a placeholder. With that though, what other members are we gonna be farming with the Phoenix squad? Uh, Zeb, Chopper, Hera, and Sabine are part of my five Phoenix squad. I'm leaving out Ezra and Kanan. Ezra and Kanan are great. They're gonna be used in our early Jedi squads, but Ezra doesn't really offer too much with his unique because Hera shares those uniques across the whole team. We're gonna be wanting powerful uniques to synergize with everyone. And Ezra just providing a little bit more DPS, not necessary when you have Captain Rex in the squad. Kanan, uh, kind of similar in that his role isn't like super necessary because him as a tank, you just have so much health and protection regeneration and CC that Chopper and Captain Rex and Zeb will just completely annihilate the team. You don't really need it. Although his unique is quite strong. Zeb's combined with Sabine and Captain Rex gives your team the ability to just permanently CC people with the massive amount of assisting as well as massive uh, protection that you're getting from them. And then Chopper is extremely important because you're gonna be able to go ahead and give everyone health recovery as well as give you protection up every single time you're damaged. And if you happen to get his last ability, man, ooh, it's just gonna be fan fantastic because you're going to get more assists across your whole team so this is the core zeb and chopper zeb is a cantina node you can farm really early in the game chopper cantina store you can farm really early early in the game you can see i already have them unlocked i already can build them out hera and sabine are hard nodes but they are twice as powerful as captain rex or twice the shards they're boosted nodes which means you'll get them around a week inside the game okay once you get hera and sabine that's when you can consider start to build out the Phoenix squad. And that's when I would start building them out, but you're not really going to see a super big improvement in the squad until you get Captain Rex. And that's where we talk about our placeholder squad. And that's gonna be Bad Batch. Now, I saw a few people commenting on the last video when I talked about the Bad Batch saying, yeah, Bad Batch is a good squad, but their later gear requirements like Chirotex relicking them up is super expensive and they're not really used for a ton. That's not even close to what we should be doing or what should we should be thinking about right now relicking squads and, and and getting them up for galactic legends or whatever that's like next year <laughs> uh, for this squad we're literally or at least i am only bringing them up to gear five around level 36 as you could see and stopping there and the only reason we're able to do this is because recently with the season three of bad batch they added the new Bad Batch or gave the Bad Batch as a returning event for all players. So you can get them unlocked at three stars at the very beginning of the game. And this gives you a nice squad to invest in while you don't have the Phoenix squad and also gives you an amazing squad because again, the Bad Batch really wasn't tuned for the early campaign. It is just an absolute breeze. 
I did not really need to invest a ton. In fact, you don't even need to go to gear five. I'm just going to gear five so that I can have the arena be really easy for me and gives me a squad that's going to annihilate Galactic War. And be aware that a lot of the times Galactic War and Arena are players, other players building out their rosters and they're going to be building out the bad batch. So if you have a subpar Phoenix squad, and you're trying to battle it out in Galactic War or Arena, you're going to find yourself really struggling as you get higher and higher with the random Bad Batch squads. Now, my Arena Shard just started a few days ago. Um, it was like all, you know, random stuff. Now the top is all filled with, you know, relic up characters and all that with the light speed bundle and stuff like that. But you can see here, again, Bad Batch, Bad Batch, Bad Batch, Bad Batch. Here's some more hyperdrive bundled players, bad batch. Here's an Imperial Trooper squad, bad batch. Um, here's a Phoenix squad. There's a couple of Phoenix squad in there. But again, the only Phoenix squads you're seeing are with Captain Rex. So when you're looking at Arena, when you're looking at Galactic War, you're going to want to build out bad batch up to around gear level five and just keep them there as an initial jumpstart to your account so you can actually get the resources that you need or the Phoenix Squadron. You really need to make sure you're finishing off Galactic War every single day. That is your main goal. If you're not, you're missing out on a ton of free resources. And keep in mind, again, pushing Arena is pretty important too. Not because you want to get the top of Arena, right? The prizes on Arena are pretty mediocre. It's all about like squad Arena currency, right? So yeah, getting rank one is like, okay, cool. Like you did it. But in the early game, it actually does matter. Your goal should be to get to around rank 200 because each tier that you're going up gives you another 100 squad arena currency. So the difference between like sitting around like rank 500 or 1000 versus 200 gives you so much additional resources for you to gear up your characters and unlock characters. Because keep in mind, with the little changes to squad arena store, there's a lot of gear that you could actually pick up in the beginning areas uh, for you to actually build out your characters. All this gear, extremely valuable, right? Two days of getting into higher level or higher tier arena, you can already get some of the uh, more premium pieces of gear in the early game. That's huge. There's also a lot of characters in here that we're gonna wanna be building out uh, as we get through the game. And so things like Grand Moff Tarkin, Mace Windu, uh, Kanan, you know, uh, Princess Leia, the, these are the characters, Admiral Akbar, all right? We're looking at ship characters as well as um, potential Heroes Journey unlock characters. And of course, this is a lot of information, but for the most part, we'll be going through all of this as we get through the game. But all of these things get massively improved if you're able to get a little bit of a head start in Arena and Galactic War. And that's why we're going for the Bad Batch, literally just to gear five and then leaving them there. Because by that time, again, once you get Captain Rex unlocked and get a couple levels into his unique, he is going to be better. The Phoenix Squad is going to outpace the Bad Batch because you're able to farm their stars up and you're going to be stuck on a three-star Bad Batch for a long time, which is why we don't want to put them in a position where we're making them our main team. We're just using them as a sort of like step stool into the early game. Again, you can look at some of the bad batch like Echo here, 7D hard. That's going to be a while. Um, Hunter, 5B hard. Well, a little bit earlier. Omega, 4D hard fleet battles. That's like never. That's going to be way down the line. Tech, 5F hard. Again, that's quite a ways away. Uh, Wrecker, 7C hard, right? So you're not going to be able to farm these characters realistically early in the game. So the only way, only reason we're able to do this is because of those free additions. It's like getting a brand new marquee character that is pretty good on a new account, but instead you're getting the whole team and you're getting it day one. So you can use them to boost your progression. So that's what I would advise doing. Um, Certainly there's some different conversations. Maybe you just go all in and maybe you build out like some of the, the commander Luke requirements. Like you get Obi-Wan and Luke Skywalker as a, as a new care, a new player. Those characters can be built out too. Or maybe you build out Jedi, Anakin and Ahsoka. Those are characters that you get uh, for free as well. All of that's fine, but I found bad batch to be an absolute godsend and making your progression just so easy. It makes it so easy. My advice is to do it. It's going to not really be a heavy investment and it's going to guarantee you those resources as I was talking about. And so that's going to really help you in the very beginning of the game.
of course we're going to be continuing to farm up our imperial troopers and i'll be going through the full list of kind of characters that i would uh advise going for um in terms of teams as we kind of get our captain rex unlocked and everything that's when we start to really flush out our beginner roster uh and and really start to get those teams ready to go so not even a consideration for like galactic legends or hero's journey or the journey guide at all we're looking at galactic war guys that's what we want to focus on step by step that's what i'm going for and i'm going to make sure that it's ready to go a quick little addition if you are starting a new account um, and you have a bunch of these events going on it is worth it to potentially upgrade some of your characters to get access to some of these uh, omega battles and actually accomplish them so let's say you know you you have the omega battle like make sure you invest some gear in a chopper and zeb so you can actually do it or let's say you have um i don't know whatever is open then then you're gonna want to make sure that you can do that if it's not like super unreasonable just try it out see how difficult it is and then make your judgment um for the fleet training make sure you're doing that and make sure you're doing these training events. These are time gated, uh, meaning that once you start, you have to wait until a certain time um, for you to continue onwards. And you get a bunch of free shards. As you can see here, you just get a bunch of free shards. That's why you see like my Princess Leia unlocked with a bunch of shards ready to go. All of that stuff, they give you free resources, free shards, and you wanna do it as soon as possible. It's just free stuff, just get some free stuff. So. That's the plan, guys. That's what I've been up to. And of course, I'll give you an update tomorrow on what's going on. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you all for the next one.